Bucks and welcome back to the channel. My name is Joy and guys, Biden has not only spoken up, he is angry. And he basically told Democrats, come at me. He wrote a pretty long letter we're gonna get into in just a second where he basically dares the Democrats, come at me during the convention, I dare you. I'm not going anywhere and he's retaliating and he's firing everybody. This is hysterical. But it's also sad and completely unfair and we're gonna get into it. And guys, if you like content like this, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, sound off in the comments, tell me what you think, tell me if you see things that I don't. Everything is really appreciated, let's dive in. So guys, I got this from pbs.com. I wanna just go ahead and dive into this. This is the official letter. Now that you've returned from the July 4th recess, I want you to know that despite all the speculation in the press and elsewhere, I am firmly committed to staying in this race, to running this race to the end, and to beating Donald Trump. Problem is, I don't think he can at this point, but he says, I have had extensive conversations with the leadership of the party, elected officials, rank and file members, and most importantly, Democratic voters over these past 10 days or so. I don't really think he knows where he is to be able to even remember any conversations or what has happened. It says, I have heard the concerns that people have, their good faith fears and worries about what is at stake in this election. I am not blind to them. Well, in that interview, he acted like nothing's really happening, just the press is being a little bit mean to him. Like, and honestly, at this point, for everything they put Trump through unfairly, they deserve it, it's my opinion. Believe me, I know better than anyone the responsibility and the burden the nominee of our party carries. I carried it in 2020 when the fate of our nation was at stake. Really? Because I'm pretty sure the other day an event said you're going to beat Trump again in 2020. So are you sure that you got your years straightened? By the way, though, Biden didn't actually write this. We know that. This is somebody on his campaign, somebody from the White House, one of the people who's been covering up how bad he is and lying the American people. But I digress. We go on. And it says, I also know these concerns come from a place of real respect for my lifetime of public service and my record as president. And I have been moved by the expression of affection for me from so many who have known me well and supported me over the course of my public life. I've been grateful for the rock solid, steadfast support from so many elected Democrats in Congress and all across the country, and taken great strength from the resolve and determination I've seen from so many voters and grassroots supporters, even in the hardest of weeks. I can respond to all this by saying clearly and unequivocally, I wouldn't be running again if I did not absolutely believe I was the best person to beat Donald Trump in 2024. In fact, I have a quote from him, one of my shorts, I did the goodest job I could do. I'm quoting him, by the way. That's the interview he did recently. So we had a Democratic nomination process and the voters have spoken clearly and decisively. I received over 14 million votes. 87% of the votes ca cast across the entire nominating process. I have nearly 3,900 delegates making me the presumptive nominee of our party by a wide margin. And although this is true, Joe, you also lied to everybody about how bad your medical health is, how bad your cognitive decline is. So when people voted for you, they voted for something fraudulent, somebody that you actually aren't because you and the White House have been covering this up, which is why we have now reported that the Parkinson's doctor has literally visited him at the White House in his personal home at least 10 times in the last year. Uh, this situation just gets crazier and crazier, I swear. And it says, do we now just say this process didn't matter? That voters don't have a say? No, we say that you are fraud. And they elected you under false pretenses that you and your team created. That's what we say. And at this point, I'm not even upset at him as much. He doesn't know what's going on. He's not in control. At this point, we have to look at him more as a child. I'm more upset at his team. I'm upset the Democratic Party, the people who've been covering this up. One I'm really upset at, Jill Biden. How dare you do this to another human being, especially your husband. Like, you must hate him to keep putting him in these positions, unless there's something that I don't know. And there's always a lot we don't know. Unfortunately, there was way too much in this situation we didn't know. And it says, we had a democratic nomination process and the voters have spoken clearly and decisively. This was a process open to anyone who wanted to run. Only three people chose to challenge me. One fared so badly that he left the primaries to run as an independent. Another attacked me for being too old and was soundly defeated. 
well, we should have listened to that guy. The Democrats should have listened to that guy, but the Democrats decided they're just going to go with popular talking points that the elites put out, and they're just going to fall in line like good little slaves and not challenge anything. Then look at what was in front of their eyes. And I'm not saying this to even be mean to Democrats. Republicans do this too. We have to stop, guys. Just because the media puts a popular narrative out there that we're supposed to follow, no less we be canceled, no less you're not allowed to work and we kidnap your kids, we need to stop doing this and look at the reality of what something is. And it says, they have chosen me to be the nominee of the party. Do we just say the process didn't matter? That the voters didn't have a say? I decline to do that. I feel a deep obligation to the faith and the trust the voters of the Democratic Party have placed in me to run this year. It was their decision to make, not the press, not the pundits, not the big donors, not any selected group of individuals, no matter how well intended. The voters, the voters alone decided the nominee of the Democratic Party. How can we stand for democracy in our nations if we ignore in, in our own party? I cannot do that, I will not do that. Again, they're devoid from any reality. You guys gaslit everybody as to what they were voting for. You lied about what they were voting for. Now you're saying we have to stand by the voters. You have to stand by the fact that you lied to them. When do we actually out? Yeah, I lied to them about how bad this is. They didn't vote for you. They voted for a dream that you sold them that is not there. That just doesn't exist. It's just, this makes me so mad because we just have nonstop gaslighting. This is like a really horrible ex right? The A word, I'm not even sure I can say on YouTube. This is just an A word X that keeps coming around and saying and doing horrible things and we're just supposed to take it. That's what these people are doing to us. He says, I have no doubt I and we can and will beat Donald Trump. No, because you're what? 35% polling, Kamala's doing better than you? No, 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 not at all. We have a historic record of success to run on, from creating over 15 million jobs, including 200,000 just last month, reaching historic lows on unemployment, to revitalizing America's manufacturing with 800,000 jobs, to protecting and expanding affordable health care, to rebuilding America's roads, bridges, highways, ports, and airports, and water systems, to beating big pharma and lowering the cost of prescription substances, including $35 a month insulin for seniors, to providing student debt relief for nearly 5 million Americans, to a historic investment and combating climate change. And yet we're all in poverty. We can't pay our bills. Price of food has gone up times four. Rent is unaffordable for everyone. I'm sorry, like this stuff doesn't matter. And on top of that, you are suppressing and hiding technology that can make everybody healthy and happy. Medbeck technology, light and sound technology, technology that can get rid of cancer cells instantly. You are with Big Pharma hiding all of this from us so we're all in poverty and sick. Because if we're sick, we're bound to be in poverty and you guys know it. Shame on all of you. Shame on all of you and shame on you for not just continuing this lie, but continuing to be horrible to the American people. It just makes me so mad, guys. He wants to rattle up all these things, and most of it is just glossy stuff that isn't real because we're still in poverty, and most of us still have health issues that we should not have. More importantly, oh, I just get so mad, we have an economic vision to run that soundly beats Trump and the MAGA Republicans. No, you don't. They are siding with the wealthy and the big corporations, and we are siding with the working people of America, which is why we're all in poverty under you, Joe. It wasn't an isolated moment for Trump to stand at Mar-a-Lago and tell the oil industry they should give him one billion and he will do whatever they want. And you know what? Maybe that's true. I'm not even saying it's not, but at this point when I hear stuff like that, I don't even believe it. The, the media has lied so much about Trump that now when I hear something that sounds outrageous, I'm like, probably another lie, which is a dangerous place to be in because now Trump can get away with whatever he wants. And I almost wouldn't bat an eye because I just don't believe these liars. That's whose side Trump and the MAGA Republicans are on. And again, their platform is all built on orange man bad, even though he's now turning orange because they didn't like the coloring of him on the debate. And that's why he debated badly. I just, that's all this platform is. How are you going to get us out of debt? How are you going to get us all out of poverty? How are you going to bring down the inflation that you and your cronies caused by sending our money overseas to wars that we didn't want? How are you going to get us out of all these wars? Trump didn't have us in wars. Trump was one of the most peaceful presidents when it came to wars. You guys did, but no, Trump bad, Trump bad. It's just, it's just literally playing off of people who are not that bright. 
A lot of people, and when I say that, I mean people who are just going to blindly believe whatever the media tells them. Well, this is bad, so you need to believe it's bad too, even though we don't look at it at all. I'm not trying to put anybody down, guys. We've all been there. We've all been there. But you got to wake up and see what the media is doing to you. Both sides. We have to. And it says, we know the way to, it says, um, where did I, uh, I just got off. It says, that's whose side Trump and MAGA Republicans are on. Trump and the MAGA Republicans want another $5 trillion in tax cuts for the rich people so they can cut Social Security and Medicare. I, I don't believe it at this point. I do not believe that's what that is. We will never let that happen. No, we won't have any of these things if you guys continue to be there. We just won't have them. And then you'll act like, oh, when they, and when Social Security and Medicare will run out, they'll just act like, oh, that's not happening inflation isn't happening that's what they keep doing they just keep gaslighting us to make us believe these things aren't happening and it says we know the way to build the economy is from the middle out and the bottom up not the top down then why isn't it working joe what these are a lot of fun buzzwords and buzz phrases but none of it is actually putting into reality what the american people are going through so everything you're saying we've well, already done and it's made us worse it's made us worse. And no, I do believe to invest in the American people from the middle to the bottom. You're absolutely right. Then why are you sending our monies overseas instead? This just gets me so fired up. We are finally going to make the rich and big corporations pay their fair share of taxes in this country. The MAGA party is also still determined to repeal the Affordable Care Act, which would throw 45 million Americans off their coverage. Let me tell you about that because I'm one of those people that had to get Obamacare. It basically forced privatized insurance on disabled people who can't afford it and horrible insurances that don't actually help us for our ailments. I know because that's what happened to me and countless other people. It just made it so that we are now forced by law. We have to have it and we have to pay a lot for it. A lot. Plan starting at $300, $400, $500 for somebody who's disabled and can't afford it. And it doesn't necessarily help them. And they're suppressing all the technologies that could fix everybody. This just makes me so, I get so mad because guys, we shouldn't be in these positions, but we're in these positions because of liars like this. And guys, the Republicans have done it too to us. The Republicans have done it too. Both sides have done it. But at this point, I am now at the point where I would throw my hat in the ring of Trump because I think Trump is our best option amongst all these people. That's just what it is. I have to look at my candidates and say, who's least willing to hurt children in an intimate way? And that's how we pick our president. That's not a good place to pick him from, by the way. Trump got the denying rental housing to black people. Wait, Trump got rich denying rental housing to black people. He got rich doing that, it says. We have a plan to build 2 million new housing units in America. They want to let Big Pharma charge as much as they want again. What do you think American seniors will think when they know Trump and the MAGA Republicans want to take away their $35 insulin as well as the $2,000 cap on out-of-pocket prescription costs we Democrats just got them? Or what do you think American families are going to think when they find out Trump and the MAGA Republicans want to hit them with a new $2,500 national sales tax on all the imported products they buy? I don't even know what to say. There's so many lies in this. There are so many lies in this. So rents started going crazy when it came to the virus and it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. And now I will say, I don't think Trump did enough to bring rent down hundred percent, but Biden hasn't done anything either. It has just continued to get worse and worse and worse. So to act like it's all the Republicans doing it. No, you've allowed this Biden. You've allowed it just as much as Trump did. And I'm not okay with Trump not putting some type of cap, especially when it happened to the virus. How dare these corporations during the virus just skyrocket things I know. I was one of the people that in early 2021, my rent doubled. It doubled being a disabled woman. It doubled. And I couldn't afford it. And I lost my home. I lost my home from what happened. And guess who's watched that happened under? Happened under Biden's. This just makes me so mad, guys. So it says we are the ones lowering costs for families from healthcare to prescription drugs. No, you're not. To student debt or housing. Now, student debt, this is, I, I really struggle with this one because yes, the students were sold a lie. I remember I back then, the whole thing was, if you don't go to college, you're a loser. This is how everyone looked at you. I went my first year, saw what was happening with the economy. I was going to be a voice major for opera singing, realized I'm not gonna make money with this degree. I have to go into teaching and teaching makes nothing and it's gonna get worse. I left everybody. There was a stigma that I am just a loser. That's what it used to be. They pressured everybody as you guys know watching, they pressured all of us into getting exorbitant loans to doing all of these things when you're 16, 17, 18 years old. 
So you can't, you know, you can't inhale substances and you can't go drinking the substances, but you can take out that much debt, hundreds of thousands of dollars for this sort of thing, and you can't declare bankruptcy on it. So I, I have compassion, even though how horribly me and blue collar workers were treated, I have a ton of compassion for what's happened to them. But to just go ahead and get rid of the debt with no plans to cap or fix what's going on with student loans, that's also not been good for inflation. I'm not saying we shouldn't help student loan debt because it is awful, but I'm saying the plan they have now, it doesn't work. It makes things worse. And I believe they don't want this country to do well. They want this country to fail, which is also why the Democrats love to push that anarchist vision on the other Democrats. Yeah, burn it to the ground. How does that make us better? Instead of burning something to the ground, how about you build something better? I love this, the iPhone. When the iPhone came into play with Steve Jobs and he talks about marketing because his marketing was brilliant. He said, what you have to do is put a device and within just a few seconds, you have to convey these people want it. You don't have to go burning anything down. You put something better in place. Use your energies, your God-given energies as the creators we are. Create something better and let people shift their focus and attention. Then you don't have to have things crumble. We just abandon what is to build something new. Isn't that the better way to do it? The less chaotic way? The, the way that's going to be better for everybody, but they don't want to push that because they want the chaos. They can control us in the chaos, and that's exactly what's going on. So it says, oh, I just get so mad. We're the ones lowering costs for families, health care to prescription drugs. We are protecting the freedoms of America. No, you are not. Trump and the MAGA Republicans, oh, it's all about Trump. It's all about Trump. Nobody cares anymore. Nobody cares anymore. Trump and the MAGA Republicans are taking them away. They have already fell for the first time in history, taking away fundamental freedom from the American people by overturning Roe versus Wade. That got overturned while you were in office, Biden. Biden, that's been under your watch. And I love this. It was so funny. James Charles had to call this out. Huge influencer the other day when Biden said in, in a tweet, if I'm reelected, I will reinstate Roe versus Wade. He said, that happened under your watch. So if you can magically do it, fix it. He can't. That has to do with the Supreme Court. It's so many lies. It's so many lies. And I'm just so glad the light is being shown and people are starting, thank God, to wake up. And it says, they have decided politicians should, um, it, politicians should make the most of personal, of decisions that should be made by women and their doctors and those closest to them. I do agree with that. They have already said they won't stop there and are going to do everything from contraception to IVF to the right uh, to marry who you love. None of that is true with Trump. Trump has said, I'm giving the power back to the states and I do believe there are situations where we should allow women to do that. And he said, I'm not trying to take this away from anybody. That's what he said. And so far, I believe that. Now, when it comes to the other Republicans, they are a different story. They are a totally different story. And by the way, for the people in the comments who asked me, what about 2025? I don't know a ton about it. I've been looking into it. However, Trump apparently has distanced himself and said he's not a part of that. So for whatever that's worth, I'm just letting you guys know. And it says they have already said they won't stop there. They're going to do everything. They have made it clear. They will ban getting rid of a child's life please infer nationwide. We will let none of that happen. I've made it clear that if Kamala and I are reelected, that the, that the nation elects a Democratic House and Senate, we will make Roe versus Wade the law of the land again. Well, now he's had to change what he said. Yes, you would have to make everything that way so you could get it to pass through and could sway the Supreme Court. Oh, this just makes me so mad. We're the ones who will bring the real Supreme Court reform. Donald Trump and his majority want more of the same from the court and the chance to add the right-wing majority they built by subverting the norms and principles of the nomination and confirmation process. And we stand up for the American democracy. After January 6th, I'm so tired of it, guys. They created, they took over. So the fascist Antifa, they took over Seattle and had several blocks and said, this is now jazz and didn't let the police and their crime ran rampant. They have done, there have been BLM and their, their Antifa have done so many riots, so much damage, so much physical not niceness. Oh, that's okay. But January 6th, when the police and everyone let them in and not all, but most were peaceful, they are all now just in a horrible position. Like, how is, 
And here's my thing. I'm not saying either were okay, but how is one okay and one's not? I don't like hypocrisy. And that's what I'm calling out here. I just don't like hypocrisy. We are the ones lowering costs for families from healthcare to all of this. And he says, and <laughs> I just get so mad. It says, we're the ones who will bring the real Supreme Court reform. Donald Trump and his majority want more of the same from the court and the chance to add the right wing majority they built by subverting the norms and principles of the nomination and confirmation process. And we will stand up for American democracy. My fellow Democrats, we have the record, the vision, the fundamental commitment to America's freedom and our democracy to win. Then why are we in poverty? The question of how to move forward has been well aired for over a week now, and it's time for it to end. No, it's time for you, Biden, to step down before they make you. Please infer. I'm legitimately scared for this man. We have one job, and that is to beat Donald Trump. <laughs> no, your job is to fix things for the American people, and the first step is for you to step down and get the medical help you need. It says we have 42 days. We have 42 days for the Democratic Convention and 119 days for the general election. Any weakening of resolve or lack of clarity from the task ahead only helps Trump and hurts us. It's time to come together to move forward in unified party and defeat Donald Trump. It's the same talking points that don't matter. I'm going to tell you right now, because I've already been rambling on and on and on. I am worried. He's not going to step down unless it's an act of God, he says. Well, the rich people in this country love to play God. I'm afraid they're going to force an act of God. I'm afraid a forced medical situation is going to happen. Please infer. I'm afraid somebody is going to do something because powerful rich people can do that. And suddenly he's no longer with us from a fake medical issue. Not saying he doesn't have medical issues, but all of a sudden, oops, heart attack out of nowhere. That was actually somebody else's doing. And nobody seems to care. I feel like us that are watching see this and we're going, oh my God, somebody help him. Nobody around him cares. We are watching a Britney Spears situation. And I think that the generations to come seeing this are going to be horrified how many people stood behind that for their own selfish reasons. And it's concerning to me. Now, one more thing I want to point out. I know this video has been long, but you're going to love this. Y'all remember the video I did the other day, and you've probably seen this, where he did a interview with a black radio station recently. And the person who did the interview, um, I forget her name, but she was wonderful. She was very warm, very kind. I actually really liked her as an interviewer. I gave her praise. I was like, I actually like her. I think she was being very kind to him. So she came out after the interview. This is the interview where he said he's the first black African female child to be elected as vice president. Remember all those gems he said? It's that interview. So she was interviewed and she came out and said, that the White House sent a list of questions for her to approve and a script. And she had to stay on script in those questions and not go off of that. And she did approve them. Because she said that, the radio station has fired her. What does that mean? It means the White House called and screamed. Because the White House said, oh, it didn't happen. That didn't happen. Called them and screamed. You fix this. You get her fired. You blame her. So that poor woman who I think did a great job and actually is a great interviewer, regardless of how it happened. She outed, she admitted what happened. She outed it, guys, and they fired her. I'm sorry, it just screams the racism that they love to talk about, that this is what they did to this black woman, that they're trying to win these black votes. They go on this black radio station, they force them to do the questions that they want, which they shouldn't be doing at all, and they know, and then they turn around, blame her, and fire her. If that's not the most racist crap to her, if she watches, I mean, my channel is still small and growing, so I doubt she does, but if this message gets to her, sue him, sue him. My heart goes out to you. You did the right thing, and I think you're a great interviewer, and I'm sorry that these people who claim that they are on your side were actually racist, and they took away your ability to not be in poverty at the moment. I am so sorry for you. They took your job. They took our jobs, but they did. They did, and she doesn't deserve that. I want to know, what do you guys think about all this? I'm so curious, guys. Tell me your thoughts. Are you seeing things and hearing things I'm not? Sound off in the comments. And uh, if you like content like this, subscribe. Hit that like button. Every little bit helps as I want to continue to shine light and truth on this. And not just that, guys. I want to be a voice that's not just doom and gloom. We have so many good things coming, especially if somebody like Trump is elected. We've got med bed technology. We have the technology to fix all of our health issues. And I do believe he's going to do everything he can to get us out of the poverty mess that's been created by Biden and this virus crap that was forced on us. I think at this point, he's the best shot we have. I'm not saying he's the perfect candidate for the job, but I think he's the best shot. And I am also begging somebody on Biden's side, help him, because Brittany, thank God, was able to get out of it. I don't know that he can. 
All right, guys, until the next one, I'm giving y'all hugs, kisses, a bright future's coming. Doesn't matter what all this is, we're gonna create it and that's what we're doing on this channel. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video.